All right, hey everybody, I'm Ben. Um, I'm an electrical engineering major, so my project I did with four other engineers is a senior design project, and it's called Luminos, the Energy Scavenging Nightlight. So in the fall, um, our client came to us uh, with a problem that he, he had bought a bunch of nightlights at Ikea that were like wall-mounted nightlights, and they ran out of battery within like a month or so. And he was really frustrated with that. And so we realized there's kind of like a limited availability in the marketplace for nightlights. You have these wall outlet, these nightlights you can plug into wall outlets, like this one, um, but those are limited by where places you can plug them in because you need an outlet, uh, and they also draw energy all day. Then you have these, kind of, it's kind of the ones our client talked to us about, um, which are motion activated. You can want them on a wall or sit them somewhere else, but they're limited by the battery life of AA batteries. And you have something like this, which is kind of a unique product called the Owl Light, um, which mounts on a window and then collects energy with a solar panel throughout the day, and then you can press it to turn it on. Um, but from reviews I've read about this light, it doesn't work that well, it doesn't last that long, um, so we wanted something different. We wanted something that would recharge with indoor light, basically. So we have, our, uh, in discussions with our client, we set these requirements that the light had to be wall-mounted, um, it had to recharge just with ambient indoor light. So unlike that, uh, that wall, the window mounted light, so it's not limited by where you can place it in your house, you can place it anywhere and it'll recharge throughout the day. Um, it needs to be motion activated only when ambient light is low so it doesn't turn on all the time and waste energy. Uh, we want it to have adjustable brightness and this, the most important requirement was that the device has to last for at least three years and that's just recharging with ambient indoor light with no sunlight potentially. So before we go on to the details of the project, I'm going to be talking a lot about electrical energy and electrical power, and so I want to kind of define real quickly what I mean by that. This is the, the circuit symbol for a, a, power, a power source. Um, it has a, a voltage across it, which you think of as how hard electrons are being pushed out of this source, because in electrical engineering and circuit design, we're trying to move electrons from place to place to do useful things, uh, in my case, providing power to other things. Current is how quickly the electrons are moving. So voltage is how hard currents, how quickly they're moving. Uh, we represent it by I in electrical engineering. Don't ask me why we do that, but we do. And then power is the energy you deliver per unit time from this source, and it's the product of voltage and current. A way to kind of an analogous situation is think of if you're pushing like a box, the voltage in this case is how hard you're pushing the box. The current is how quickly the box is moving. And then the energy you expend per unit time is the, the kind of the product is proportional to how hard you're pushing it and how quickly it's actually moving. So that's when I say power, that's kind of what to, what to think about is how much energy is actually going into this device. So this is the high level system diagram of Luminos. Um, we have in the middle a microcontroller, the MSP430 specifically, that's taking input from a PIR sensor, which is a motion sensor, it stands for passive infrared and an ambient light sensor, as well as a little knob on the side to adjust the brightness. And then this orange system over there is what scavenges energy from the outside world, and I'll go into what battery multiplexing means in a bit. And then finally, we have this output stage where we control the brightness and output to LEDs. So my specific part of the project was the system all the way on the left was getting as much energy as possible. So I'm going to talk about kind of what we needed for that part of the system. Um, this is like what we wanted to do in typical daytime operation. So we have, this is the circuit symbol for a battery, and in this case it's the main rechargeable battery. We have input from the power from the solar panel, and then that power is being used to supply the energy that the rest of the device needs to run. And any excess power is being used to recharge the battery. Now my job in this project was to maximize that arrow, that big arrow on the left, to get as much energy as possible in during the day so that we could recharge during the night. And then during the night, when there's no power from the solar panel, the battery is discharged and, excuse me, is using that energy, that, it, that excess energy that it gained during the day. So what do we need to kind of maximize that big red arrow? First of all, we need something called maximum power point tracking. So solar panels um, are very volatile, I guess you could say, depending, obviously depending on indoor light conditions or just lighting conditions in general. Um, this is the typical power versus voltage curve for a solar panel. Um, and you can see that the peak of the curves 
depending on the high incident light or average incident light, or depending on the incident light onto the solar panel, are in very different places. So we need some way to force the solar panel to operate at these voltages that allow for maximum power to be output from the solar panel. And that's called maximum power point tracking. Another consideration we needed to, to take into account was what if during the night or uh, during the night, the, say the, the main battery is turned on a bunch of times. Like for example, the LEDs take the most power out of anything in the system. So what if the, someone walks by the light a million times during the night and it's on basically all night? The battery would suddenly become way, way over discharged so it couldn't provide energy to the rest of the system. And we need some way to basically give it a break so that all of the power from the solar panel can be used to recharge it. So that's what, uh, that's what I mean when I say battery multiplexing. It's choosing between two batteries. So we need a main battery and a backup battery during normal operation, which is what this is. This is typical daytime operation. The main battery hasn't been over discharged. It's as I described before, and the backup battery is disconnected. Now, if we get in that situation where the main battery is over discharged, then we disconnect it from the system so that instead of just excess power going to the, to the main battery, we get all the power from the solar panel going to the main battery and the backup battery provides all the energy that we need to run the rest of the system. So in, a, in summary, we needed maximum power point tracking for the power system. We need a way to switch between the main battery and the backup battery. And then as a final kind of side note, we need to convert whatever that operating voltage that the solar panel ends up at to the correct voltage for the battery. And as with a lot of problems in electrical engineering, there is a chip that Texas Instruments makes that does all of this. It's called the BQ. 25505. It has maximum power point tracking, it has built-in autonomous battery multiplexing, and it has a boost converter which ups the voltage from, what, from the input to the output, which is exactly what we need. Now, the algorithm that it uses, maximum power point tracking is a, is a very active area of research in power systems because uh, there are a lot of ways to do it. The way that the BQ does it is, is kind of ingenious uh, and it's also very simple because it uses very little power in, in, in terms of like calculations to do so. Basically all it does is it samples the maximum circuit of the solar panel, the vol voltage of the solar panel, sorry. And you do that just by disconnecting it and that's called the open circuit voltage. And then we kind of know empirically that for most solar panels, the, uh, the maximum power point is at 80% of the open circuit voltage. So the BQ samples that open circuit voltage value and then drops the input from the solar panel that enforces it to be at 80% of that value, and that makes it operate at the maximum power point. Um, now, the, the difficulties with this project were, uh, were balancing cost and energy, because this is a picture of the, the final product, by the way. Uh, lithium ion batteries are very expensive. Um, they hold a lot of energy, you can recharge them, they're great, but their price goes up really quickly with the amount of energy you need. Another limitation that was uh, introduced by this was the size of the solar panels. So you can get, obviously, the bigger solar panel, you can get more power, but they're more expensive and they limit the size of the device. In fact, you can see from this picture that the, the final device size was basically only constrained by the solar panel. This solar panel takes up a whole face of the device. So what we ended up going with was this two watt solar panel because we found that uh, empirically that t solar panels tend to operate at about 0.1% of their actual maximum power rating when they're used with only indoor light. And then we used a 3.7 volt, 1200 milliamp hour rechargeable battery and that's like the typical battery you'd have in like a cell phone. And we have as a backup battery 3.6 volt and then it's double the capacity of the other one because it's never getting recharged. So after we implemented it, this is the, what the light looks like when it's on. We found that when it was powered with only indoor light, it still operated at a slight energy deficit, meaning it used a little more energy at night than it got in, in the, during the day. But nevertheless, we found that between the main battery and the backup battery, it could last for just uh, almost, almost four years, three years, 267 days, which was a success because that met our requirement and actually exceeded our requirement. Then we also found that if it's near a window, so this is, Nowhere near window. In fact, this was, all these measurements for, for the first part here were taken at night with uh, no sunlight at all and just using the indoor light. If it was near a window during the day, you could get up to 10 times the power from the solar panel that you could when it was powered with only indoor light. So we operated at a huge energy surplus and 
that, may, that means that the lifetime of the, of, the, of the whole device is basically only limited by, whoops, by the number of times the battery can recharge. Uh, because lithium ion batteries capacity goes down a little bit over time every time they're recharged, and that is much longer than three years. So overall it was a success, but some improvements we could definitely make in the future are um, the size. It's a little big right now, so if we used higher efficiency solar panels, we wouldn't need as much area to, uh, to, to get as much power as we need. And right now, as you can see from this picture, we have two printed circuit boards. Um, that, the reasons for that aren't that important, but in the future, we can move that to just be on one, and that could also allow us to make, use a much smaller device. An original goal in the project was to have Bluetooth capability, so you could adjust the brightness from your phone and collect data on how frequently the light was turned on and how much energy was scavenged throughout the night. Um, that would be an improvement we'll add in the future, definitely, so they can have kind of an IoT means Internet of Things uh, connectivity. Um, that's it. Thank you. Do we do questions? Yeah. yeah. Is there any questions? Yeah. The higher efficiency solar panels that you're looking at to chain for size, would those also add to the cost? Yeah. Probably, yeah. Yeah, they're more expensive. Um, so like if we wanted to stay at this kind of time frame where it's lasting at three years, we could we could reduce the cost of the battery and increase the efficiency of the solar panel. But I think the idea behind that improvement would be that it would increase the lifetime overall. So it would also probably be an increase in cost of the whole device. Yeah. All right, thank you.